Hello, my soccer universe. What a round in Austria we had. 20 goals in six games. That's a pretty good goal average, I would say. And there were some quite remarkable results in there. One of the big wins was, of course, for Lask 4 0 at home. Things are very much on the up. It was another nice afternoon out. I love when it's good weather in fall. Perfect footballing weather to go. Same thing goes for the spring. But we have to talk about what was happening in the league. So many things. We not only had the last win, we had Hartberg getting a third win under their new coach in his third game. Pretty remarkable stuff. We had, of course, the big one. Sturm Graz. Absolute flattening Salzburg. 5-0 after both teams kind of underperformed in the Champions League for Salzburg for sure. But for Sturm, I think they ran into a much better opponent in Club Bruges. So major soul searching at Salzburg at the moment where you really don't know where is this coming from. Because before the last international break, the Salzburg machine was up and running quite well. But now it is stuttering. There's something not quite right. We also had one coach dismissed in Standfest early on on Alltag. I more or less had just finished editing the video and was posting it. Then when the news came out that Standfest has been relieved, now they have interim duty with Arte Nuhio and I think someone else taking over. The rumors are that Zoki Barisic from Rapid is gonna take over there, but there's nothing yet confirmed, so we have to wait and see. We also have the big rumor that sporting director Andreas Schicker from Sturm Graz is heavily, heavily, heavily linked with Hoffenheim. So he might be leaving probably already during this international break. This might spell doom a little bit for Sturm Graz because it was Schicker and Ilze that really got Sturm Graz high and they managed to double. At the moment Sturm Graz still look like the best team in Austria and maybe they can sustain this one for one more season under coach Ilze. But I wonder how this is gonna look going forward. I actually have the feeling that even though Salzburg do not look good, they might stumble to a title. Or will it be Rapid? I mean, honestly, their European performance is really, really strong. In the league, Rapid have looked really good. They are definitely one of the teams to watch. So maybe they could challenge for another title if Salzburg is not up for it and Sturm Graz is kind of also plateauing. It might be that we get a title fight between Sturm Graz and Rapid, which is very much reminiscent of the mid-90s. That would be interesting because those are the two strongest fan bases at the moment. And speaking of Rapid, we also have now the final verdicts for the ugly scenes that happened at the derby it is all financial penalties and no point penalty for a rapid basically 150,000 euros that can be reduced but there's also conditional closure for both teams for three games and those three games are only against the top opponents where if there's another thing happening like that this will happen this is now for i think the next one and a half years i think they got it overall right i think monetary penalties are better in this case than having points deductions. That's my personal opinion because this is where you can really hit them hard and you also have to make give an incentive for controlling the crowds at the derby. So enough of everything surrounding the Austria Bundesliga. Let's go right into the games. It was a weird win for Austria Vienna against GRK at home. They won thanks to a penalty and own goal and they scored even own goal themselves to, for the 2-1 win. Fitz penalty opened the scoring in the 24th minute for make it 1-0. Galvao then unlucky own goal for GRK and again GRK is a team that tries to play forward but leave themselves open on the back and yes it looked like it was Fischer who scored the goal but now in the end it ended up being an own goal. GRK cannot find an equalizer. Austria Vienna get a first win in quite a while. Tyrol get a late equalizer to salvage a 1 1 draw against Blau Weiss Linz in a game that for most of the time looked like Blau Weiss Linz are gonna win. They just didn't manage to get the second goal. However, Tyrol actually were well in the game. But they always had the feeling that Blau Weiss Linz is just a tad better. Opening goal came in the 29th minute through an own goal by Lawrence. And then Taferna with a free kick that goes through everyone, including the goalie. Gets the equalizer in the 83rd minute. Both teams then wanting maybe to get a winner, but we're not really capable to. The Bundesliga team of the moment is definitely Hartberg, who under their new coach Manfred Schmidt get their third win in his third game. 
This time a 3-2 away to Wolfsburg, who looked like they could take the table last week when they lost at home to Tirol 3-0 and now they again lose a home game and are now losing the contact to the top teams. Again, Hartberg take the lead through Miege in the 10th minute. Open game, more or less, when you can't score the second one, you thought this was it. However, Ballo holds one back in the 67, immediately answered by Wilfinger. 3-1 lead, Hartberg cruising home, no, got the mile late on, gets a goal back, but Hartberg were very good for that win, and they have found their mojo, so maybe it was good that Markus Schopp left for Lusk, and a new voice could come in, because you felt kind of that Schopp at the end of his tenure was a little bit not very satisfied with what's going on, despite his self-proclaimed love for the club. After the great performance in Europe, Rapid get a very workmanlike 1-0 win at Altach. The winning goal through Belio in the 36th minute. First half, they were better. They had some good chances. Second half, they more or less saw the game out. Gustavo Santos had one really good chance to equalize for Altach. But in the second half, there was really not much coming. So yeah, even under new interim management, Altach still cannot get a win. Lusk with Klagenfurt emphatically and in the end easily 4-0, which now means 5 games unbeaten if you include Cup and European games, which is the exact opposite of what we had before with 5 losses in a row in the league and add to it also some not so good results in Europe. So things definitely on the up, but it was hard work. On a beautiful day, I think we're lucking out because every other weekend it's beautiful and in between it is rice the weather, let's put it that way. That's when Blauweiss Linz is playing at home. but. I gotta say, it was a good afternoon to go and watch a football game with the girls. This time my father joined us, he's camera shy, so there are no pictures of him in there as well, but there will be some pictures of the girls, of course. We have to celebrate a lot, and I have to say, especially my little one, and I know, as a parent, you should never have a favorite. I do not have necessarily a favorite, but the way she celebrates, it is just so this joy in her. She might not be watching all game long, but when there's a goal, she's fully in there and she's chanting and everything like that. The older one, you know, is now in this teenage phase where um, you're too cool to celebrate in a way, but she was also in there, so I was very pleased with that. Let's talk about the game. Peter Parker, of course, knew that Lask is a little bit on the ascendancy, so you're not gonna open up this bases and play very attacking football. No, you keep it tight because this is where Lask have a problem. Usually, however, you have also the can opener in Robert Schul who always manages to find a pass. And there were many passes for Lusk. Sometimes they play some nice attacks, sometimes they try to play too nonchalantly and it is stopped by Klagfurt, but Klagfurt were always on the man. Fortunately, the referee throughout the game, I always had the feeling, could have given a few more fouls. The only yellow cards that came were for Lusk when Klagfurt were actually quite physically, not unfair but physically with Lusk players, so I found this was not quite right the way this was going. And it was a stroke of genius that actually opened the scoring when it was kind of a ping pong ball in and out the box for a flecker plays it back to Schul, who over his shoulder one times it into the net. Wonderful goal in the 25th minute. You knew already at that point that that is actually good, but we also know Lusk have been giving up two 2-0 two leads in the last two home games, at least against GRK, it resulted in a win. But you had to be wary of this one. It was really hard to get through this Klagenfurt defense. And then early in the second half came probably the moment that could have changed the game when a header by Koch, who was the first shot of the game for Klagenfurt, hit the crossbar. If that goes in, I'm sure that Lask will crumble. But a little bit later, Jovicic plays it over to Entrup, who shoots on goal through the legs of the goalie into the net. His first goal for Lask. He also had his first start. And I have to say, with him up front, there's also a different dimension to Lask. I really like Jovicic as well. But having those two and maybe changing according to the opponent might be a real weapon up our sleeves as well. Honestly, that was the game. Yes, Klagenfurt had then a few situations where they were dangerous. And if you concede, it might be worrisome if you would like. But you know, you, br you bring on Jovicic, you bring on Pinto for a little bit more flexibility in attack and maybe even, even a bit more speed and it's exactly Pinto who makes a run that <laughs> crosses in and the robot converts it from quite a distance as an own goal that of course was the game that then late on Pinto makes another cross into Mustafa in stoppage time 
for the fourth goal was just icing on top of the cake. Maybe this was a little bit too high, but it was good for goal difference. There were also then long periods where we sustained possession for Lusk, where you find, yeah, they just want to kill off the time, don't risk an injury or whatever, because if you would have played on, you might have won even by more. But you know, I'm not complaining. It was a 4 0 win. It was a beautiful afternoon. Things are looking up. Next two games will, of course, be a little bit more challenging. But at the moment, you're sitting still only in ninth place. But now you're well within touching distance of the top six. And and if you've seen already, my model actually predicts at the moment that Lusk will end up in the top six thanks to other results also going their way. So overall, for now, positive feeling, but still lot, lots of stuff to do. You have to get a little bit more consistent. And then I think this is a really good team. Sturm Graz absolutely take Salzburg apart, beating them 5 0. This is the highest loss for Salzburg in the league since. 2008 when they lost at home in a very famous game to repeat 7-0 on Easter Sunday. This was one-way traffic. I don't know what's happening with Salzburg at the moment. They lose 4-0 to Brest at home, now 5-0 against Sturm Graz. There's something absolutely not right. The confidence is gone, the hierarchy is wrong. But I also want to lose Sturm Graz. They had an early goal by Jatta already disallowed in the fifth minute and Jalque makes the first goal for Sturm Graz in the 15th minute before the Bierreth show starts. He scores the second goal in the 30th minute right after the half and play out error by Salzburg as there are so many. He's intercepted by Chukwani who <laughs> puts it to the beard and directly puts it in the internet and then just a few minutes later he also scores his third goal of the evening as the first time he scores a hat-trick and then Ivo in the 76th minute heads it in from a really short distance. It doesn't help that goalkeeper Blaswick for Salzburg did not look good at least on two goals. It tells you there's a whole lot of things not going right in Salzburg land. Are we seeing now the dismantling of Salzburg for Sturm Graz? If their manager is leaving during the international break, this was the perfect saying goodbye present. Look at the next set of fixtures. Right after the international break, so it's already late October. Lask have to go to Tirol, which is always a little bit of a hard opponent. One fixture sticks out. Sturm Graz against GK is a Graz derby, the first one in Bundesliga in almost 20 years, I would say. We have an interesting one between Blauweiss Linz and Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg really needing to get points again. However, Blauweiss Linz also. Those two teams are very hopeful that this time they make it into the top six. And then there's Rapid against Hartberg. Hartberg have been in really good form. Rapid are in general on good form. And another one that's very relevant for top six is, of course, Austria Klangfurt against Austria. Vienna. Watch out for that one as well. And we have to see what Salzburg is doing. So this was it from me for this week in the Austrian Bundesliga. Really exciting stuff. This league looks to be wide open again. It used to be that it was all Salzburg and then everyone is trying to somehow catch them. At the moment we have Sturm Graz only a point ahead of Rapid. True. Salzburg have two games in hand, two on paper winnable games against Hartberg and Klagenfurt, but especially Hartberg are getting now a lift and maybe pushing again for a top six spot. The race for top six is probably the most exciting part of it, but I think that the title race up top uh, could be a three-way race. Unfortunately, the fourth team that everyone expected to be there has let up early in the season, but maybe Lars can join later on. Maybe the halving of the points for one will be in favor of, although I still don't find it quite right. In any case, let me know your thoughts. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!